guys, I'm Aloy Andalus from NBFX and Effective TDs, and this is a series of random tips and tricks in 3ds Max. There is some basic stuff, but there is some stuff that I think that people don't know. I hope that you found some interesting stuff and you learned something on these videos. So let's start. Displaying procedural maps on the viewport that match the rendering is a very common problem that people has. Sometimes you simply want a map to emit particles or to use it on a vertex selection and you realize that your final render doesn't reflect what you have on the viewport. In this example, I have a noise. This is the viewport, this is the render with Arnold or will be any renderer. And as you can see, it's different. If you check the red uh, stuff on the face, it's different on the render. If we change any values on the noise map, you will see that it's all the time different doesn't match the viewport uh, as what we have on the renderer. So before you had to always render to see what was going on. But it's something that was fixed since Max 2012 or similar. On your material, you need to make sure to use show realistic material in viewport instead of the default. Then you will see that it match one to one. Red to red, it's exactly the same. If now I change the noise map, you will see that it's exactly reflecting the same and it will work with any procedural map. It will work with any procedural map. It will work one to one with any procedural or if you use OSL, this is an OSL candy as well. It will render exactly the same. You will have the same dots with OSL. You need to update to 2019.3 to have most of the OSL reflecting correctly as your renderer. Sometimes we have uh, objects with composed of multiple elements like this car. Uh, if we select it, we have different objects as an element and we want this to be separated. There is multiple scripts, but there is an easy way to do that with Max alone. Let's add an edit mesh. You need to always have an edit mesh. It doesn't work with edit poly. Select all the elements that you want to be separated. Go to explode and make sure to have this at 180. This will select by angle. So anything that is inside this angle will be unified. So creating it at 180, anything that is a close object will be an individual mesh, an individual object. Let's click explode. We will have this card apart and automatically you will have each object as an element that is close. It's pretty useful. Let's say that we want to take this bunny and we want to decompose this object into multiple elements. As we saw, we can add an editable mesh and do it with explode option. So instead of putting explode to 180, we will put it to zero and we will do the same in triangles. But the problem is that this is not procedural. We need to hit explode every time. And this, if we need to do a lot of change, cannot be the best solution. But luckily for us, we have MCG. We don't have any specific modifier to do it, but with MCG, we can create our own. So to do it, the easiest way is to go to scripting, create an apply MCG modifier. We will call it detach police two because I already created. Okay. And it creates by default this. Basically, we don't need anything of that. We have an input mesh and we have an output mesh and we can manipulate it. We need first an a split split mesh into polys. Then we need to attach everything back, attach all meshes and we output this is all what we need. Then we press control E. Do you want to save it? Yes, it's evaluating it and it's saving on this location. And you only need to do this one time. After that, you will have this modifier on under max creation graph. You have this as the Dutch police tool. So you simply go there and you can always open it and add more stuff or do whatever. So as you see, it's very simple. You have the input mesh, you split the mesh into polys, attach all mesh together back to output it. And as you can see, the smoothing groups are 
broken as you expect because each of these is an individual uh, element now and let's add a shell we can add a turbo smooth to have something nice let's increase iterations we can add a push modifier there to make it a little bigger and here we go now uh, we can add a, a prop optimizer let's calculate that and the cool thing now is that we can increase or decrease this value and it will auto evaluate and it's totally procedural so I think it's pretty cool and useful and I don't know you can do things like instead we can add here again another push before the shell and in theory we should be able to do a decompose or things like that so you can go crazy and yeah another way to show that the stack modifier in 3ds max is very powerful and you can do a lot of things with it and mcg it's giving us a lot of flexibility to create your own modifiers if it's not there create whatever you want most of the times I forget that we have the ribbon tools and there is a lot of stuff there. Um, I hate them, how it's uh, this ribbon stuff it's created, but let me know in the comments if you hate it too. Uh, but the fact is that there is pretty cool stuff there. Uh, let's see one of them. We will create a wall based on a plane. We need a plane with some subdivisions. You need to have an edit poly. If not, it will not work. We go to polygon modeling and we have generic Generate topology. It's only one of the things that it's hidden here. Let's click. You have multiple stuff and it will change the topology of your mesh. The one I like it, it's the skin. Let's click a skin. You can click a skin a couple of times. And we have this kind of Boronoi look that it's kind of interesting. Then you need, let's add another edit poly just in case that we want to keep this procedural. Let's select everything. Control A, you select everything. Let's add a bevel there. Let's add some bevel. And the important thing here is to keep it by polygon because now we have independent faces. And with the turbo smoothing top, we have something like that. And this can be. Um, easily uh, a pavement or a high res wall made of of pebbles um, i don't know i hope you found this interesting when you need to create a camera it's very useful to go in the perspective mode uh, check what camera angle do you like and then you press ctrl c it will create a physical camera on your perspective view so now i am on the perspective camera and it's there and you can create as many as you want with, simply with Ctrl Z. But what if you are in V-Ray or Arnold and you want another type of camera, like a V-Ray camera or an Arnold camera? So let's say that we want to create a fisheye. The easiest is you create a camera first. And while it's selected, if you go to your perspective that you want and you press Ctrl Z, now that the camera that you create before, it's moved to your position. So now we have an Arnold fisheye camera on the position. And remember to have it selected when you create Ctrl Z. In perspective mode. In so the camera that you have selected will move to the position. It works for any renderer. Uh, Corona, V-Ray, um, everything. So it's kind of useful. Use the stack modifier to keep your workflow procedural. If you do any change now on the edit table mesh on the base object, let's say that we move this and we move this and we move this, you will be able to go and do this as soon as you get undo functions. But if you work on multiple objects in your scene and then by some reason you want to go back to your original mesh, you will not be able to do it because you did all the changes on editable mesh. So instead, add an edit poly and never work on your base 
object level of the stack. So if I add an edit poly, and let's say I want to move this Also remember an uh, important thing with soft selection. Let's make this bigger. Soft selection is selecting based on a ra uh, radius. Right now the radius is selecting this. Maybe you want this soft selection to arrive until the end of the tail of the horse, but you don't want to select these objects. You can use edge distance. By default it's one, increase it to a huge value. This will make sure that you only select uh, vertex that are connected. So in this case, you still have the same radius, but it's not selecting these objects. And now, for example, and don't move this on the edit poly. We can create another edit poly with the same. Let's do it there. Let's move this. And let's delete, for example, the face. So now it doesn't matter uh, your own undo. If you want to go back to your original object, you can take out this edit poly. We still have everything with it. You can go back to what we did here and go back to what we did here. So we always have our base model. And this is the most uh, powerful thing, I think, in 3ds Max. We can work procedural in this way. We create this effect that it's a liquify effect, basically with a melt and a volume select. And we are liquefying this object. Let's say that we want to change the base object, that is this A table mesh. In Houdini, it will be simply to replace your original object importer node by the new node. Uh, but you can keep it as well procedurally in 3ds Max. We can add a substitute. And then we point to the object that we want. In this case, we have this dragon. We pick the scene object. We can also select an XREF. If we want to select our material, we can say that no, if we want to keep the material. And we still have, now we can hide the dragon ref. And we have exactly the same as we had before, but on our dragon. And you can go from one object to the other with this uh, turning on and off this substitute. By default, all your modifiers are grouped by selection modifiers, wall space modifiers, and object space modifiers, but you have a lot of modifiers on the same group, and it's difficult to find something. You can as well say show all sets in list on this button, and then they are grouped by categories, so you have more categories and it's easy to find things. And as well, you have show buttons. Show buttons will select some modifiers, and basically when you apply it, it's easy and fast to apply your most used modifiers. You can have it here, and you can configure these buttons in configure modifier sets. Uh, then you can add as many buttons as you want, and you can say if you need a turbo smooth or whatever, turn to poly, you can have it here, so now you have all your buttons here. And it's a very fast way to access your modifiers. As well, remember that with Express, you can type whatever, and it's a very easy way to access your modifiers without needing to need this list. Sometimes we need procedural motion for our objects, translation, rotation, or a scale. We can always do it manually, but sometimes we want simply things moving around without a exactly predefined motion. We can do it with controllers. Let's add some random rotation on this controller. I like always to have a rotation list, for example. This allows us on rotation list to have the, our Euler XYZ, but also have different types of rotation that will create an average between them. So now, if you expand this, we have our default one, but we have an available one. Let's add a rot uh, noise rotation. This will give us some random motion that it's crazy. Let's constrain it only on Y, not Y, on X. This defines the amplitude. And as you can see, it's too fast. 
let's turn off fractal noise and reduce the frequency. I hope you don't go crazy with that. Uh, so something like maybe that. Something like that should be fine. So we have now some random rotation. And it's pretty cool. You can expand this as much as you want. I cannot do that with this plane. Uh, so it's procedural, so it's infinite. But keep in mind that the cool thing, since we have a still an XYZ, uh, we can still move this and animate this in top of our noise rotation. Uh, something we can add to give more a secondary movement to this it's a flex modifier. I like always flex, so we will select some parts of this. Let's select this, this, and maybe a little of that. Something like this can be cool. Edge distance, it's always interesting to define better our soft selection. Maybe this can be bigger, and this as well. Something like that should be fine. And now let's add flex modifier. You see here the motion that we get with that. Uh, we can always make it more visible. Let's increase the flex. You can play with these values. Flex will increase this secondary motion, this delay when it moves. Um, the strange is how strange it will try to come back. So decreasing that, you will see the object more wobbling around, and the sway is how much it moves around uncontrolled. You can try to increase this uh, slightly, so we have something more like that. And let's add an edit mesh in top to get rid of the selection, and we get something like that. And it's pretty cool for some fast uh, animation and cool looking. And you can always go back to your noise rotation, double click. And then here, if we increase the, the motion, you will see this going faster and crazier. And that's all, guys. I hope that you learned something. Let me in the comments if you learned something or any tip or trick that you have for 3 ds Max, if you found something interesting that you want to share, maybe I can collect some of them and create a new video soon. For all of you with technical questions, we have the forum effective3ds.com, we have a new and revamped forum, I hope that you like it, and you can ask whatever you need about 3 ds Max, Houdini, or any other technical problem with any software, I hope that you like it and you are welcome to subscribe and leave a comment if you like this video. Thank you guys, see you soon!